So before we get started, let's figure out what MIDI actually is. MIDI is essentially a set of instructions that we give the computer to make a sound. We tell the computer where to play, what to play, and how long to play, and then we can customize the sound that we want it to play as well. So MIDI controls the virtual instruments that live with inside the computer. We can do this by either drawing in MIDI information or playing it in live like an instrument, just like with this MIDI controller here we can use it to play something in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by drawing the MIDI notes in. This allows us to create drum beats, chords, bass lines, anything else without the ability to be able to actually physically play them in. So if we're not the best drummer or best keyboard player, we can actually just draw what we would like the computer to play back to us. Also within Ableton Live, there's a few handy tools to help us conquer music theory as well. So if you're also thinking, well, I can't play an instrument and also don't know music theory, Ableton Live's got our back, so don't worry about that. So when you create a default set in Ableton Live, you will have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. So the MIDI tracks will deal with the MIDI. So how we create an empty MIDI clip is we simply find an empty clip slot and we double click. There we go. Now by default, what Ableton Live will do is it will create a one bar loop. Loop is turned on here, you can turn it off, so that means it will just play through the one bar, but as a default, it turns on. To help us see that this is one bar, Ableton Live has grayed out this section, which is beat one, and then grayed out this section, beat two, three, four. And if you see there's another four segments within each one of these areas. That is our 16th notes within music. So what that basically means, is if we imagine each beat as like an orange, we have one, two, three, four, that's our orange. We can then cut those beats up into segments of the orange. So the usual one is we cut them in half. We get one and two and three and four and. The subdivision we're going here, or the segment of the orange is we're cutting it into four. So we have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. That's one E and a. That's quite confusing to start off with. So how I'm gonna reference that is I'm just gonna call this beat one, and then I'm gonna reference what space I would like to put it in. So beat one, space two be here. Beat three, space one, beat four, space one. Makes sense. So now we've got the duration and we can see this across the top as well. Beat one, beat two, three, four, and then the halfway point is measured there as well. Now down the left hand side here, we have the musical keyboard. Now this goes up in octaves. If you scroll up, you get the highest pitch, which is C8. If you scroll down, you get the lowest pitch, which is C minus two. And then essentially, if you imagine it like a spreadsheet, we plot a note on a horizontal line which represents the pitch. So if I double click to create my first MIDI note, it'll be G. Then along the top, it tells me at what point in time would I like that note to happen. So at the moment, that's gonna happen on beat one. So if I double click on the first space of each beat, you would have a note play on the first space of each beat. Okay, so let's jump in and choose an instrument. So I'm gonna go to instruments here. Instrument rec, I'm going to go down to piano and keys. There's some nice E pianos here. So I'm gonna to go to piano, E piano old school and drag that to the top of the channel and that will load. Now you see the MIDI channel has changed. This is what it was previously. It would just show us that it was sending MIDI data out and we'd have a MIDI output here. But now if you look, it's been loaded with a sound source. So now it's sending out audio and we have a meter here. So now if I press play, it sounds like a heartbeat machine, okay? So now what we can do is we can highlight the notes and we can shift them up and down by pressing command shift down. See, you can hear what's happening there. And if I double click and put one here, you're gonna have a different rhythm of that note. Okay, fantastic. This is all well and good. Hopefully that's making sense. We can also adjust the length of the note here by dragging it out. And also down here, we have the velocity. It's like how hard the note is gonna hit. When we program it in, they all come at the same velocity, which can sound a bit robotic. So we can go in and we could just drag it down. That's gonna be less hard. And then we could drag one up. That's gonna be harder, okay? So it adjusts the timbre and humanizes the rhythm. We can also click in here, press Command A and select randomize. So that will randomize the velocity from the point that it's at within the 127 degrees. And then you have, well, how much is it gonna randomize it by? Is it gonna randomize it by the whole 127 velocity range? Or could you just do a little bit? Let's just do a little bit. See, it 
jog them around a little bit you can go in and decide doesn't naturally mean it's going to be better it can be a bit too random okay great so that's that's hopefully making sense and so now let's make some music with this so let's program in some chords so this feels like a good octave if you're unsure of what notes to play what you can do is turn on this little headphone dial here and go through and select now this is where this little built-in lifesaver <laughs> has been put in it's called scale now what we can do is we can turn it on and then it gives us what well, highlights just the notes that live within a scale. So we've chosen C. So if we go, well, we started on G, let's choose a G, G major. And it only shows us the notes that live within G major. Now the ones that are grayed out mean they are not within the key. So if we played them, it technically would sound wrong. Now what we can do is we can press scale and that will fold those notes away. So now we only have notes that live within G major. So this makes it super easy for making chords, which is great. So what we can do is we can go and we can create a chord sequence. So first thing we're going to do, we want to extend the length of this loop because if you think about chord sequences, they don't naturally last for one bar. You usually have four chords and they'll last for a bar each. So we could do that by going up to length here and we can select four. Now I'm just gonna delete these MIDI notes here to start again. Now, if you notice, I've still got all these subdivisions going on. And what I want what I want to do is I want to have my chords ring out nice and long. So there's a quick way we can do this. We can right click and we can choose the fixed grids. The fixed grid is how many segments are we seeing? So I'm gonna just put it down to one bar here. Now it gets rid of all those subdivisions. And when I put a note in, if I choose this G, and now lasts for a whole bar. Now this is really cool because now we can't play any wrong notes. What we can do is we can simply just put a note anywhere. I recommend doing it within the octave. So if we went like that, then maybe, hmm. There we go. So Now how we make chords with that is we just simply count up three notes from this note here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Same here. And now we should have a diatonic chord sequence. Basically means it's in key and it should sound, should sound all right. <laughs> Nice. Now, this is a little cool trick. If we hold, we click on this first note here and we press shift, go through it and select all these notes here, hold down option. Now just drag them down an octave. So now we have like a, a bass note here. Hey, hope you're enjoying this video. Firstly, if you've gotten to this point in the video, thank you for watching this far. Secondly, can you hit the thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm? It really does help us out. Why not consider subscribing to the channel, turn on all the notifications. We have loads more useful videos just like this coming real soon. Anyway, again, thanks for watching and let's get back to the video. So this is where we can go in now and randomize some of these velocities. So I'm gonna just select them all and go, so let's go up to 10 here and go randomize. Now it's kind of moved them all around a little bit. Now say if you want to go in and put another chord on the end here, what we can do is we can go right click, go back to a fixed grid. So let's say eighth notes this time. I like the notes and this is where we can edit the rhythm. There we go. And then I can double click and maybe put in chord just before I maybe do, let's try this chord. Let's go like that. And I'm just gonna click like this. And what I can do here, rather than, I can either extend them out like this, or I can just press legato up here and that will extend them. There we go. So that's, that's programming chords. So now try experimenting with different chords and different keys by go up here and select different root notes and select maybe a minor key. If you want to get a bit more extravagant, you can choose all these different kind of crazy scales here. Then press the scale button up here and it folds it. So that's how we would program MIDI in. So now let's look at how we would record MIDI. So there's two ways we can do it. First way is we can record a new clip completely from scratch. So I'm gonna do that with my MIDI controller here. 
to just button in to let you know you don't actually need an external MIDI controller to play these MIDI notes. If you go up to this little dial up here, turn this on, you can play your QWERTY keyboard just like a musical keyboard. So A becomes like the musical C on the track. Comes to C. Now we can change through the octaves by pressing Z, which goes down, or X to go up the octaves. Now we can play chords. So this is a C major scale. Then we have the black notes in between, which is E, T. You can also turn this dial off by just simply pressing M on the keypad here. So before we get going with our MIDI controller, we just need to check that our preferences are set up properly. Now, most MIDI controllers these days are something called class compliant. This basically means you plug it in and Ableton Live will recognize it straight away. You don't need to download any additional software, but if you do plug your MIDI controller in and nothing happens, you will need to go to the manufacturer's website, go to the download section, and then see if there's any software you need to download. Once you've got your MIDI controller plugged in, press Command Comma, open up Ableton Live's preferences, and go to the Link Tempo MIDI tab. All we're going to worry about is this section down here, which shows us the external MIDI controllers plugged in. So here what we've got is we've got a MIDI in and MIDI out. So that's how Ableton Live is receiving MIDI information in from an external controller and how it's sending it out via the USB lead. So receiving MIDI in, if we look down here, we have a few options. We have track, sync, remote, MPE. So track is dealing with receiving musical notes in. Sync is dealing with like tempo and pulse information. And remote is dealing with any kind of CC messages or any remote controls. Now on the output, we can do the same. So we can send MIDI notes out of Ableton Live to the controller. We can send tempo information and we can send remote. Now, the reason why I've got it set up like this, I have track because I want to be able to play MIDI notes in like this. If I turn that off, I can't do it, okay? A remote enables me to control parameters within Ableton Live as well. Now, we don't really want to send MIDI notes out because there are no sounds on this keyboard, but we might have arpeggiators or sequences built in so an arpeggiator is where we press the fingers down and it will, over rhythmic duration, play back notes. So if we turn this on, this will send out Ableton Live's pulse or its tempo. That's like what, what this is. And then it will sync to the controller. Now you would have to go to the MIDI controller's preferences and go to sync and select external. That's in different places for different controllers. So just look at your manual and look at tempo syncing with a door. And that'd be it. And then remote, also we don't really need for a MIDI controller that is sending out um, CC information or automation so we can control different parameters on our MIDI controller, which we don't really need to do. So I, I do this by turning on session record up here. Now what we can do is we can go up here and we can right click and then turn start playback with record off. So you see it's ticked on and you saw I pressed down, it started straight away. I'm like, whoa, I'm not ready yet. So I can turn that off and then I can just essentially arm it so it's ready. Now I can go and arm my track. That's the record arm there. Now can you see my stop buttons, which were like this before, have now turned to record. So as soon as I press that, it's going to give me a two bar counting. And you can change that by going up to the metronome up here. And I need to engage the metronome so I can stay in time, okay? We go now it's playing back to us what we just recorded okay and i could double click and go in and see the midi notes here now if you played some wrong notes or you're in a different key like i now i'm playing in a minor key i can go and turn this scale feature off here and then we can see our notes now notice classic thing is if i zoom in here and i can do this by going up here and dragging down See that turned to my pointer head to a magnifying glass. I am late with the timing. So I could go in and move these all around. No one's got time for that. So what we could do is we can use 
quantize. This is another beautiful thing with MIDI. What we can do is we can go Command A, and if we right click, we can see here quantize settings. So we can go and say to current grid or nearest 16th note or nearest eighth note. I like nearest 16th eighth note and 100%. Apply. Cool, it's got it. Now, can you see one of the problems? It's got this one, it's got this one, this one. I was closer to the second 16th note within the bar, so it's come in a little bit late. So what I can do is I can go in again, right click, go quantize settings, and maybe set it to one eighth note. Go apply, it's got it wrong again. So what we can do is go quantize settings, and we can go in, we can change it to one fourth note, apply. And that's gonna snap it to the beat. Also notice that I got a little bit too excited and I hit the notes a bit too hard. So I could go in and I can highlight the notes here and then I can pull the velocities down to match the other ones. So you see there with MIDI, we have a lot of options to correct our mistakes. Also, another thing, if you record at say this speed and you want to speed it up, it's not gonna affect the sound. You're just simply recording in like data points along a timeline. So if I do this, I turn it up. So what it means is if you're not the best keys player, you can record this very slowly, then speed it up at a later date. So that's pretty cool. Last thing is with this session record, we can add on top of things we've already recorded. So for example, here, if I look at this recording I did, and I was like, maybe I want to add in like a little melody, like turn this session record on and then press play on the clip and it will act as like a MIDI overdub. See, I've got the speed down so I can play. And I can maybe go up an octave and go. Go. Cool. So you see there, my timing's not great. So what I can do is I can go up and I can actually turn on something here in edit called record quantize and that will automatically record whatever I play in. So I can go here and I can go down to 16th note quantization. So it's gonna knock it to the nearest 16th note. So I'm gonna undo all that I just recorded. It's done the audio. Let's go again. Same thing, play there, session record. Let's arm that. knocked it in time. See this one, it got a little bit confused. I played it a little bit late. So what I can do, what I can do is select it individually and replace it. And I can also go in and adjust the velocities if I wanted to go in here. Maybe I could go randomize. So that's drawing and recording MIDI. So this part of the course, we're gonna look at all these software instruments available to us in Ableton Live Lite. Now there's always only been four available, but since Ableton's new update 11.3, they've included an awesome new virtual subtractive synthesizer called Drift. Let's jump in and have a look at the old four, then we'll have a look at the newly added Drift synth. So you're probably thinking, this looks different to mine. You don't only have five, why have you got more than me? It's because I got Sweet installed on this computer. So some of those instruments open up within uh, light. So I'll just look at the, the five that are available in light anyway, just ignore the other ones. So we'll start with drum rack. Now drum rack doesn't actually generate sound itself. It's just plays back samples. So it's an instrument for layering samples, um, for layering synths and also effects. And it does this in a classic 16 pad grid. So let's drag that in. So you see if I click, there's no sounds. And if I press play on my MIDI clip, nothing happens. But you can see 
the play buttons illuminate. So basically it's sequencing those pads, but I need to load them with a pre-recorded audio file. So if I go to my samples here, I can go and search for like kick. It's quite a good one, let's bring that down, put that on that pad, then search for snare. It's quite cool, put that one there. Then hi-hat. That's quite cool as well. Now if I press play, we should hear a drum beat. Now this, this has been sequenced by this MIDI clip I programmed earlier. Back here. Now as they're playing, what we can do is we can also swap out the sounds with this little hot swap button here clicks and shows us where the sample that we generated lives within our sample library. Then I can simply double click on another one and it will load it. Let's try the snare. We can also layer the sounds as well. So say this snare here, I would like to layer with a clap. Search for clap, drag it down. Before I let go, if I hold down command, it puts it into an instrument rec and then I have the chance to blend them together. So now I can have, have two sounds playing together. We'll look at instrument rack in a minute as it's one of the instruments that is included within light. Hey, hope you're enjoying this video. If you'd like to dive deeper with Ableton Live, why not check out my Ableton Live full course? We not only cover all the awesome things Ableton Live can do, but we look at writing, producing, track from scratch. We then look at how we record vocals, mix it, and master it ready for release. So if that's something you're interested in, click the links below. Anyway, thanks for watching so far, and let's get back to the video. So that's how you would load and make your own drum kits. Now, if you look here within our categories, Live Light has its own category for drums, and this is where it has some pre-made drum racks with samples already loaded, custom macros, and all sorts of crazy stuff for us to play around with. Now, the ones that are really fun are the core kits. So if I drag that on there, that is an 808 core kit and it has some snapshots available for us and macros, which we're not gonna get into how to generate these ourselves in this course. But like I say, if you wanna dive deep into that, I do have a full course on Skillshare and Udemy where we dive in and look at how you can make all these custom racks yourself. So check the links in the description below. Let's see what that sounds like. I can play around with some of these snapshots here, which change the sound of the, well, the drum kits and the effects on it. So clean, and we've got boomy, lo-fi, and hot. We can go and adjust some of these dials here so we can drive it a bit more to make it a bit more distorted, a bit more low end, more vintage, and compress it a bit more. Cool. So that's drum rack. We're gonna look at Impulse, which is also a sample playback device, but this has a lot more complex modulation capabilities. And we can get some really cool, crazy sounds out of it. So let's have a look at that. So let's go to Instrument, and we're gonna scroll down to Impulse and load that onto our track. So this is the empty patch. You can do the same here with the pads as previously discussed with the drum rack. Drop a sample here, hot swap it out. What we're gonna do this time is we're gonna look at a preset. So you do this by clicking this little arrow down here. I'm gonna to go to Impulse 808, just double click. Now it's loaded the samples. I press play on this beat. Great. Now what we've got for each one of these pads here, we have a modulation section here and some effects. So if we look here with this, this kick here, I have transposition and stretch, which this will stretch the sample out and this will transpose it. Now I can have the velocity of the drum coming in modulate this. So if I go up to my kit here, you see I have got a beat, got the velocities here, and I've changed this one here to be really loud, this kick here to be a little bit quieter, and that's gonna change and play around with the, the modulation in here. So if I do the transpose 100%, can you hear it's affecting the pitch if I turn it off? Do it again. And then if I do the stretch as well. I can set it to random as well. I have random capabilities coming. Let's 
try that with the hi-hats so you can do it individually. Let's drive them a little bit. Then we can also do this with the filter as well. So if I do this with the snare here and I'm going to turn the filter, turn the filter on here, put the frequency down a bit and do the lossy. Resonance up. There we go. And I've got some panning velocity here. Let's do it down there. Or maybe let's do that one to let's do that one to random. I think that one will work better on the hi hats actually. So let's do that to random. There we go. And we have an overall time here, so we can stretch all the samples out. Whoa! Let's, or, nice. And then we can transpose it as well, so we can do it up and get some glitchy sounds all right down. Fantastic drum machine, this. So play around with impulse and all the different modulation capabilities there. So the other one we looked at was instrument rack. So instrument rack is a way of grouping or combining multiple instruments and effects into a single device and allowing for split and layered keyboard sounds and customized macro controls. Fantastic. What we're gonna look at today is just the presets. So the presets are amazing because they've got quite a lot of real sounding instruments so it's really good for pianos so if we scroll down here we have some amazing piano samples so like the e e piano here so if i drag that in on the other midi channel here i'm going to unarm that one and press m nice okay so let's try a grand piano sound nice okay so yeah, I would suggest to get started, just look through the presets here. Once you get a bit more comfortable within Ableton Live Lite, then you can start looking at making your own custom instrument racks. Next one is Simpler. So Simpler is another sample playback device. Drag this on here. We can use this as like a drum playback or we can build our own synthesizers. Okay, so let's just look at it in pure its form. So if we go up and find a sample, let's go like kick. Here we go, and we just drag it in there. And that's pitched across the keyboards in classic mode, okay? And one shot, same thing again here. Slice will come on to in a minute, we'll bring in a more percussive thing and we'll see what that does. But essentially when you change the dial, you have a few more different options. We'll look at the classic mode in a second when we build our own synth. But one shot here, look, we've got fade in, so fade out. We have transposition. And then we have velocity. So basically we can get rid of the velocity and we have a filter here. So let's look at the classic mode now and how we would build our own synth. Go here, I'm gonna bring in like a, yeah, like a long note here. This could be anything. This could be you singing into the computer. Play that now. Cool, hey? So what we can do now is we can customize that a little bit with the, the controls here. So I can I can choose this thing here where I put a loop and I can choose the length of the loop here. So I can, can drag a little bit in there or I can offset the start. See, so it'll start here and then I can fade that in. So we need to check the tuning and we can we can do this with an audio effect. We can go up to utilities and go tuner so on the edge. Put this on the end and press C. See it's playing a B. So what we can do is go over to these controls here. We have a further modulation sort of area here. And I'm going to go to transpose and I'm going to put it up semitone here. So it might be already on zero. So you can transpose it down to the C is doing C. And then you can do sense here to fine tune it. 
so that would fit with other instruments now now this is where we can now use our attack decay release so if i put the release up a little bit cool hey put some yeah put some reverb and uh delay through it cool hey then also if we go into controls here we have some modulation so for example here we have pan i can put that up here and then i can use this lfo put it 16th notes there we go you can have the spread as well spread it out wider maybe bring the filter down a little bit the LFO to the filter. To the pitch a little bit. And we are ambient artists. There we go. So now let's look at another one, which is the slice mode, which if I go and get a a drum kit here, bring it in with lots of transient information. It's now spliced it across the keys. Now it's done it by transient. I can go in and I can choose by beat. Oh, I've got the effects still on, I wanna turn that off. So I go through the octaves to find the So this is super fun as well with vocals. So if you go vocal, Let's drag that in. Yeah. Next is the amazing new synth, which is Drift. So Drift is a is modeled on an analog subtractive style synthesis. It's ripping off synths such as the, the Moog, the Minilog, the Grandmother, Korg MS20, all those really rich, warm sounding analog synths. And it does this with a super user-friendly interface. You have your oscillator section here, your filters, envelope section, mod section, and then this is the heartbeat of the Drift, which we have this section here, which is the actual, what well, is where it gets its name from, Drift. Basically, it puts the two oscillators and the filter frequency out of phase and sync with each other, so you get this movement. That combined with the stereo mode, pans those voices around the uh, stereo image. Let's say the synth with just the poly and no drift on. Introduce the stereo mode. Here we go. Drift. <laughs> 